Hello everyone. Welcome to BLK Pediatric Practice. In this talk, I am going to cover about BiPAP and its application in pediatric critical care unit. So to start with, BiPAP is a bi-level positive airway pressure. It has got two component. One is a inspiratory positive airway pressure, which is IPAP, and a expiratory positive airway pressure, which is EPAP. So IPAP is triggered by the patient and when the patient triggers a set pressure is delivered to the patient the it, pressure can range from 10 to 20 centimeters of water so we can start with the lower pressure lowest pressure of 10 and can increase to 20. epap is similar to the to cpap which we are all aware of and what it does is it provides a constant pressure through inspiration and expiration and it helps in keeping the airway stented. So what are the indications of BiPAP in pediatric intensive care unit? It can be used in various obstructive diseases like bronchiolitis, like in asthma, in restrictive lung disease like any parenchymal disease, like pneumonias, in chronic respiratory failure conditions like uh, chronic uh, respiratory uh, neuromuscular disorders like Duchenne muscular dystrophy or SMA, or it, it can also be used in uh, hypoventilation uh, syndromes. Post extubation, it is used effectively in most of the pediatric critical care units where the chil children are uh, ventilated invasively for a prolonged period of time. And once they are extubated, they are extubated onto BiPAP and then gradually weaned off BiPAP. In such situations, the extubation, the reintubation uh, chances decreases significantly. So in this uh, video, I'm going to uh, tell you about the BiPAP machine and how it can be set, uh, set for the use in pediatric ICU. So this is a uh, most uh, simple uh, BiPAP machine which can be used, which is available in most of the pediatric critical care units. So as you can see here, uh, we can uh, we have four modes here. That is therapy, comfort, setup, and info. So once we go to setup and we select the setup, then we, if you notice, we have different modes of the BiPAP that can be uh, opted for. One is a ST mode, CPAP mode, and S mode. So ST mode is a commonly used mode in most of the settings. It has got IPAP, EPAP. BPM is breath per minute. We can set uh, amount number of breaths that can be delivered uh, to the patient. Rice time, ramp time, so on and so forth. So uh, once we have set it up, then we go to therapy. And then when we select the therapy, then the BiPAP uh, machine starts functioning. So as I told you, ST mode is the most commonly used mode. It delivers IPAP and EPAP. And a pressure which is uh, which is started for any patient is at a lower pressure. We can start at a IPAP of 10 and EPAP of 5. Breaths can be adjusted according to the age. The maximum that can be delivered in this mode, mode of uh, BiPAP is 30 breaths per minute. And it can be titrated according to the use of the patient. Ramp time is uh, is uh, signifies the ad adapt to ventilation gradually. It increases the pressures from a sub-therapeutic level to a set pressures over a set interval between five to 45 minutes we can set. Rise time determines the speed at which the inspiratory pressure is risen to a set target pressure. We can use one to increase the speed for the fastest rise and six for the slower rise. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to initiate BiPAP, how to get on uh, get onto the patient with the BiPAP mask. So before starting a BiPAP, the patient should be placed in the uh, head and elevated position of 30 to 45 degrees and appropriate size mask needs to be used. So for that, what, what happens is we need to uh, use a mask with uh, covering the lower part of the, uh, below the lower lip with the mouth open, encircling the mouth and the nose and reaching to the junction between the nasal bone and the cartilage. So the mask is applied onto the uh, face and then it is uh, the straps are used to fix the mask. So while fixing the straps, we have to ensure that we place the two fingers below the uh, strap and then the straps are tightly pulled and fixed. So this ensures that the mask is not tight, too tightly fixed 
or it's not too loosely fixed so that there is an appropriate amount of leak can be allowed. So we need to allow some amount of leak so that the patient can have comfort while uh, using the BiPAP. So the BiPAP mask also can be placed onto the child so that the child's anxious level can be relieved before even starting the BiPAP. And once we start the BiPAP, as I told before, we need to start with the lowest set possible pressures and gradually increase the pressure so that the child gets acclimatized to the situation. There are different types of interfaces that can be used like nasal mask, which is, uh, which has got, uh, uh, there's a problem with leakage from the mouth and used, but mainly for most of the chronic situations like OSA, total face mask, helmets also can be uh, used as interfaces. Now, if we are allowing a particular amount of leak, how much amount of leak is acceptable? There are guidelines given, given for the NIV. So a leak between zero to six means if it, if that comes on the, on the BiPAP machine, that means the mask is too tightly fixed, which we do not want. If the leak comes between seven to 25, it is just about the right fit of the mask. If the leak uh, displayed goes above 25, that means we need to adjust the uh, situation adjust a mask and monitor and and we need to address the uh, uh, leak situation cautiously for the appropriate usage of BiPAP. Certain, most of the uh, NIV machines have got a leak compensation and it can be as low as 20 liters per minute, which is inbuilt in the machines. So coming to the end to the take home messages is, it, BiPAP can be used for the acute as well as chronic respiratory conditions. Timing of initiation of the BiPAP is most important. We need to start immediately if we if there is indication seen, and this helps in avoiding an invasive in ventilation for the patient. Choosing a right interface is very much important. That uh, uh, that helps in uh, help uh, that helps in BiPAP uh, uh, usage in the patient. And with the right interface, the outcome can be appropriate. Leak should be uh, provided and acceptable to the lower acceptable level. Thank you.